I couldn't wait to get up here this morning. That's a first. <laughs> but the first thing that I want to say this morning is how to thank all of you for participating with the John of God Beds. But more than that, um, so much more than that, I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this spiritual community. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, everyone's respect and consideration and love for Kathleen just showed me how incredibly special. We aren't, but we are special. I talked with her this morning because I had some miraculous things happen this week that I want to tell you about. But I sent her, uh, I sent her a picture of four deer in my yard this morning, me eat, chomp, chomping away. But I also sent her a, you know, we, we hit a dog last weekend, and she shared it with you last uh, Sunday when she was up here. So I looked it up this morning, because yesterday, so I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's okay. Yesterday I was driving home, and this turkey came blowing out of, this, out of the brush on the side of the road, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 you know, I just, <laughs> no, thank you. And I closed my eyes to brace for the impact, because, I mean, she was right beside my car. And, and there was no impact. And I opened my eyes because I fully expected it. And she f jumped and flew over my car. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> this never happened before. So this morning, she kept saying, turkey, 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 look at the turkey. And I have this, uh, whenever I have really strange encounters with animals, I get out my medicine card book and look up what their gift, their their little message might be. And uh, I am ahead of myself, but I'm just going to read you two pair, two sentences. The little the little quote with the picture says, "Oh, brother turkey, so freely you give of everything that you are, so others may live." And then this sentence says, "Depending on how turkey is aspected in your cards, or how she shows up in front of your car, you are being given a gift." This gift could be spiritual, material, or even intellectual. This gift may be great or small, but it is never insignificant. Congratulations. You may have just won the lottery, or the gift may be a beautiful sunset, or the smell of a fragrant flower. On the other hand, you may, be, you may feel the spirit of giving growing within you and wanting you to share it with others. So then I had to look up dog, because I have to tell you, but on the way home the other night from, um, from that was when we packed up and we moved, we went ahead and we're going home that night, that was um, Tuesday night. There was another dog standing in the road. Huh? I screamed because I could see, it was a yellow lab, so you could see him sitting in the road. And she, we were easily able to go around him and he just sat there looking at us. Well, that was just above and beyond coincidence, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> so I sent, I took pictures of this and sent it to her this morning. Dog, you are so noble until the bitter end. Your medicine is the teaching of true and loyal friends. But basically what it says is, and I think it's over here, basically what it says is that you are a, you are a, um, a servant to the people, is what it says. Yeah. So, again, I just want to say thank you. And I have to say that, you know, I really, I felt so strongly about the John of God beds and Kathleen that I kind of got bossy and I muscled poor Angelo and, and I muscled poor Sandy and told them, you have to make this work. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let you get away with it. And I just, and they did. And they were so graceful and so beautiful and loving toward me. And the fact that they trusted me enough to move over and make things happen so that we could have this event. Mm -hmm. That I am, I, I, it is beyond words how much I love all of you. And even if you didn't participate in the bid, you got a shot in the arm whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that while I was under the, under the bid, they showed me the bowl, if you will, showed me a bowl of the Valley of Oakhurst. And they showed all the different spots of consciousness in different colors. And I could hear each one of them making a sound like we were looking, we were sitting and listening to an orchestra. 
there were the, the reeds over here and the brass over here and the drums over there. And each and every little bit of consciousness that was going on was playing the song. And I could hear the song, I can't remember it now, but they said, this is the song of Oakhurst. And at the bottom of the, in the center of the bowl was this huge white light that was coming out of the center. And they said, this is the PLC. And because of this event this weekend, you have raised the light in Oakhurst. So, so speaking with Kathleen this morning with all the things I was sharing with her, I told her, I said, we have to buckle our seatbelts because I'm already, I mean, the people who, they want appointments already, you know, I'm like, and Spirit told me, get ready because this is the way it's going to be. And so I'm just like, I think maybe when you come next time, you'll have to stay two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what is absolutely infinite, because we're, the topic this month is infinitely peace. Well, we are. We are infinite peace. You know, actually we are infinite peace because we are aspects of God, which is love and peace. We have this illusion that there's pain and suffering and all that other stuff, but when it comes down to true reality, there isn't any. And we choose. We actually, I think, that, so I, a friend of mine would say that I was being ignorant here, but that's her journey and that's okay. But I told Kathleen this morning that I said, you know, I am so deeply grateful she has a friend named Kathy, and I have a friend named Kathy who have suffered great, great illness through their life. And I said, you know, there's many healers that I've known. Mary Baker Eddy's one. I met a spiritual, a Catholic spiritual healer named Sister Josie, who was a Catholic Filipino lady who travels around the wor world because she's so surrendered. She lays hands on people, and then you go into her healing service in her living room. There are stacks of wheelchairs and crutches and canes and everything coming out from the walls because people have left without them. Mm -hmm. And because of those people who were willing to take on the suffering of our world through their own bodies, they walk away these brilliant lights. And I'm so grateful. I'm great egotistically I'm grateful I didn't have to do that. But I'm grateful for those who are the great souls that are willing to do that for the rest of us, to lighten the burdens. But when we talk about infinite peace, do we really want it? You know, because I was thinking this morning, we are in a world of contrast. There's the world, we have ego going on and we have spirit going on. We are human beings. And so, this is the world of contrast. And we have this great passion to see these, these rights, these wrongs righted. We have these amazing gifts and passion and artistic creative abilities that we love, we hate it at the time, but we love to accomplish these phenomenal obstacles put in our way because we're so very proud of what we've done when we get to the other side of it, don't we? Ooh. I certainly have. And so it's like, do we really want infinite peace? Because in a way, infinite peace would seem to me to be kind of lazy. <laughs> like, uh, I don't have to move. I have infinite peace. Why do I have to go somewhere? Do Boring. Something? Boring. <laughs> but we have infinite peace at our beck and call at any moment of the day or night. We just have to call on it. You know the old joke about the two boats and the helicopter? Does anybody not know that joke? <laughs> well, anyway, there's this, this dam breaks, and this man is, the, the floods are coming toward his house, and the water is rising, and he's like, he's praying to God, please come and help me. And this boat drives up in front, and he says, come on, get in the boat, the water's rising, you've got to come with me now to save you. And he goes, no, no, God's going to help me. And so the water gets higher and higher, and he crawls onto the roof, and this other boat comes by, and... He says, God, I need your help. You've got to save me. And the, this boat comes. He says, get, get in the boat. You know, I'll take you to safety. No, no, God's going to save me. So then he's on the very last inch of his chimney up on the roof. And this helicopter comes by. And he says, get on the ladder and come up, up here. Because in a few minutes, you're going to be underwater. And I can save you. And he says, no, no, God's going to save me. So he drowns. And uh, so when he gets to the other side, he says, God, I pray to you for you. 
you to help me. And God says, well, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, but it, we do have the choice to either listen to the signals that we're being given or not. And some people deny and ignore the signals that they're getting. And some of them, I don't know about you, but my name is Jenny. And I don't know if you know this, but female mules are named Jenny. And, you know, there's an old joke, and a real old joke that I just love, about uh, the farmer who had these two amazing mules. They would do anything when he snapped his fingers. So this farmer was so impressed with this, with this uh, mules that he bought them from the farmer. And so he took them across the field toward his farm. And all of a sudden they stopped. They plopped their butt in the dirt and they would not move. And he pulled on them and jerked them and kicked them and beat them and nothing. So he went back to the farm. He got the old farmer. And the old, the old farmer picked up a two by four and they walked across the field. And when he got to the mules, he cracked them across the head with the two by four. And they got up and they were ready to go. And he says, these mules will do anything you want them to do, but you have to get their attention first. <laughs> So, Dr. <coughs> Swami said that we are, we are never going to be without ego. So we're doing, we're doing and being, and doing and being, and it's that constant flux of back and forth. And he said it's kind of like doobie doobie doo. <laughs> so we can't let go of the, mag the magnificent opportunities that Spirit gives us in order to learn to move us into the directions that we're going. I mean, we can rest assured that we are on our right path. But anyway, I'm going to continue um, before I get there. Krishnamurti said that his secret was he didn't mind what happened. And so I've, you know, I've really, really been playing with that the last couple of years. So when my car breaks down and it's 105 down there in Fresno and I'm a long way from home, you know, I'm like, okay, this is what it is. And I have AAA, and the tow truck came, and I got, and I, actually that was a miraculous weekend because I got my car fixed before 1.30 the next morning, or afternoon, when the man was three weeks behind because he was a friend of Rich up here at Woe. I mean, just, if you allow what is, you lose, something happens and it really is scary. It really is scary. Allow what is and say, dear Lord, I don't know what you've got planned, but I trust you. You know, two weeks ago we talked about if you, have, if you did not have a friendly universe, if you didn't have a God that was friendly and loving and let you get away with murder, then fire the old one and get you a new one. You know, give him a makeover. He doesn't mind. He's big enough for that, you know. It's almost a cliche, but it takes a lot of pressure to make a diamond. And sometimes we just have to trust. And I know from my own fear and the stuff that I've dealt with throughout my life that I just, I've gotten to the point where I've gotten so tired of trying to manage my life, I finally just sit and forget it. You know, it's like, I can't control it. I can't control my food. You know, I'm like, I'm going to be good today. And then somebody hands me a big slab of cake, you know, or something <laughs> like that. You know, I, I, I can't even do that. I can't manage my business. I can't do any of it. And so I'm like, okay, God, I'll, I'll work for you. And you take care of the small stuff. You know, I, I just don't want to even be messing with it. Because I don't like what my ego does to me. You know, so that's another way that we can find infinite peace is to tell our ego to sit down and shut up. <laughs> and it reminds me when... Um